Welcome everyone. My name is Martin Dreiling. I'm located at University of Munich um, and am the coordinator of the European MCL network. But thanks to these specific virtual times, I was able to join the ESH workshop update on treatment of lymphoma, uh, which takes place just now in Paris. So what are the news specifically for mantle cell lymphoma? Well, it's fair to say that we have increased our therapeutical armamentarium. Uh, so far, chemotherapy-based regimens is somewhat standard of care in first line. In relapse, uh, we have already defined uh, the targeted therapies as a preferred approach, namely for the early relapses, so the relapses within uh, two years, now we have really a selection of a couple of different BTK inhibitors, ibrutinib, acalabrutinib, uh, and xanabrutinib. And what it's fair to say uh, is that um, all three have similar efficacies, but they differ when it comes to tolerability. And what is also fair to say that most of us do believe that now moving from the monotherapy to combined targeted therapy that will even uh, increase and improve our results. Finally, the last edition of our therapeutical uh, treatment lines, now we know based on an international phase two trial that even for the patients failing BTK inhibitors, we have an additional treatment line which is based on CAR T cells. Now, we had a very nice discussion here in Paris how to move on with the tools we have right now. One thing which is fair to say that these targeted approaches are very strongly pushing into first line. All of them are currently investigated in first line treatment within studies. Now, the second question, which was even more important, what about the different risk profile of the patients? Do we have to differ treatment? And in this regard, I would like to refer to a recently published um, recommendation together with the MD Anderson Group, uh, now uh, online available uh, from JCO, and we classified the patients in four groups. The one patient with standard risk, low tumor burden, we would in fact recommend watch and wait. For the standard risk patients, but high tumor load, we would uh, recommend initiation of treatment. And it's fair to say with our current chemotherapy approaches, we really achieve reasonable results with long progression-free survival. Now, having said that, what about the third group? These are the high-risk patients. And these are the patients who ask me, what is high risk? This is not based on MIPI, but this is based on the biological risk factors, namely P53 mutations, a key I67 above 30%, and blastoid morphology. And in this patient group, uh, it's probably the fact that at least this is what we hope. This is not yet safe, but we hope that the addition of targeted uh, treatment to chemotherapy will improve our results. Because what we achieved so far, in first line at least, uh, we uh, observe some response to chemotherapy, but relapses occur rather quickly in these cases with P53 mutation, high Kia 67, and so on and so forth. So our hope is uh, that specifically in this high risk patient population, we will have some improvement with the introduction of these com combined approaches. Having said that, so far this is only belief, but this is what is currently being tested in clinical trials. The next step, of course, will be then to move on, or let me just finish up, the fourth group is really the ultra high risk group. These are patients, for example, who not only have high risk molecular features, but also already fail to uh, BTK inhibitors, maybe even CAR T cells. And, and if we could define these patients up front, my recommendation would be to really move on to experimental treatment right away. But again, this so far is, is a recommendation. It's not knowledge, it's belief. 
Now, we had a very interesting discussion um, how the treatment will move on. And all of us uh, believe that the next step will be combination of targeted therapy plus chemotherapy. And the second next question will be uh, really, may we substitute chemotherapy overall? And what we have so far is really results in low risk uh, cases where we really have some encouraging data with, for example, the BTK inhibitor plus rituximab in first line treatment. And now the field is really moving on to more potent combination and that's namely BTK plus. So BTK inhibitors remain, uh, let's say, uh, the anchor uh, position of all of these treatment approaches, but the combinations are all over the field. And in our discussions here in Paris, we really addressed the point where the P53 mutation alone should be a reason to start treatment. And there's somewhat conclusion all over the field that the high risk per se alone is not sufficient to start treatment. And that is based on the observation that the CLL-like kind of diseases, they, at least some of them, tend to remain stable for a couple of years. And the same holds up for the cases with low tumor load where you might consider not to uh, treat at all. Even in these cases, if they have P53, we still would recommend for the time being uh, to watch and wait. To summarize, these are really very interesting times. We are just you know, at the advent where we move on from cytostatic uh, compounds to really targeted therapy in mantle cell lymphoma. It's already standard of care, but the frontline studies are um, running. And our hope is that at the end of the day, we may be able to treat our patients more efficiently, but with improved tolerability. And we're very much looking forward to that. Thank you for your attention.